Hi guys, welcome back to Lulu is Getting a Sister. Now we are about halfway through our book and I'm so excited. We're getting ready for chapter 13. Last time we saw Lulu, she was calling her parents, telling them all of the ways that she learned how to mess with her little brothers and sisters when really Call Me Debbie explained to the parents that Actually, there were other camp counselors that were telling stories about how when they made a poor choice and then decided that they didn't like that choice and they fixed it. She did, however, say that some of the students took those as advice, and that's what we're hoping Lulu will not do. So we're going to see if Lulu um, took that advice from the campfire night. So chapter 13. We won't have to wait too long because now that Lulu has finished freaking her parents out, she's getting Sebastian and taking him on a hike. And she's thinking that on this hike, she might try out some of that bad and beastly big sister behavior, which she so loved learning about last night at the campfire. For the truth is that Lulu didn't expect she'd be feeling one bit terrible if she did some not nice things to a little sister. And although she wouldn't be beastly to a teeny tiny new baby who only knew how to eat, sleep, poop, and cry, once that baby got big enough to get in her way and start messing with her stuff, watch out. There was plenty that big sister could do to make a little sister very unhappy. And Lulu could practice doing it to Sebastian. Oh, here's Lulu. Now, why can't Lulu remember that she is here at Camp Sisterhood to learn how to love and be nice to a little sibling? All I can say about that is that she should never have been allowed to w hear those wicked stories at the campfire night. Now, Sebastian, who was eagerly waiting to go on the hike with Lulu, tried unsuccessfully to give her a hug. Back off, Sebastian, Lulu said. We're hiking, not hugging. Sebastian backed off, slung his huge backpack onto his skinny back, and then headed huffing up the mountain trail. Well, here's Sebastian climbing up the mountain trail. Lulu toting her backpack, walking behind him, and after some slow, sweaty hiking, she decided the time had come to try the BBBSBs. She had learned from counselors Veronica, Caitlin, and Josie. First try. Lulu to Sebastian. Everyone here at Camp Sisterhood likes me a whole lot better than they like you. Maybe you haven't noticed, but they do. Sebastian very cheerfully to Lulu. I've noticed that they do, and I do too. Well, that didn't work. Second try. Lulu to Sebastian. I know this awesome secret, but I'm only going to tell you if you leave me, if you let me have all the candy your grandma keeps sending you. Sebastian very cheerfully to Lulu. Wow, an awesome secret. When will you tell me? Meanwhile, take the candy and also you can have my flashlight. What's wrong with this kid, she thought. Lulu waited a little while, and then she made her third try, saying to Sebastian with a sigh and deep disappointment in her voice, oh, I wish you were one of those kids who was strong enough to carry both backpacks, yours and mine. Too bad you're so little and skinny and wimpy and weak. Other kids your age can easily do it. Not true. They really can't. But I guess that they are all so much stronger than you, she said. Now this is how Counselor Josie had confessed on campfire night. She had gotten her little sister to carry two great big bags of groceries up a steep hill. She didn't make her do it. Her sister kept begging and begging Josie to let her, insisting, Please, I'm strong enough, I'm strong enough, I am. Till Josie was finally forced, I mean, pretended to be forced, to say okay. So she basically tricked her little sister, and now Lulu's doing the same thing to Sebastian. So Sebastian, like Josie's sister, kept telling Lulu how strong he was 
until she finally allowed him to carry her backpack. And while bent under his double load, he was huffing and puffing and huffing up the trail. Lulu, carrying nothing and quite pleased with how clever she was, was smoothly and unsweatily strolling behind him. Until, and of course there had been an until, Sebastian was crushed by the weight of both of the backpacks. He stumbled, staggered, wobbled, pitched forward, and then fell flat down on his face, belly first onto the mountain trail. And here you can see him here. There was silence, absolute silence, for a moment. And then Lulu asked a little impatiently, Talk to me, Sebastian. Are you dead or what? No, Sebastian replied. Well, anything broken? asked Lulu. No, Sebastian once again replied. So get up and let's keep hiking. Lulu, who wasn't the most sympathetic of girls, told Sebastian. Another long silence, and then Sebastian replied, Ugh. I think I twisted my ankle when I fell. I think I'm done with hiking for the day. He turned his face so he could look deeply into Lulu's eyes, and maybe he was smiling and maybe he wasn't. I think you'll have to carry me down the mountain, he said. Carry him down the mountain? Carry him and his heavy backpack, and also her heavy backpack? Ugh all the way down the long mountain trail. This certainly wasn't Lulu's idea of a wonderfully wicked BBBSB, but sweaty, smelly, dirty, achy, and unbelievably grumpy, Lulu wound up having to do it on this extremely hot Saturday morning, near the end of her first happy week at Camp Sisterhood. Now, some of you really smart readers are probably asking why Lulu didn't get any help from that parent lurking quietly in the background. Surely you haven't forgotten that there's always a parent lurking in the background. But that parent had decided that since Lulu alone had gotten herself into this mess, Lulu alone should have to get herself out of the mess. What do you think? Is that fair? Is that right? I say yes. And here's Lulu carrying Sebastian in all the backpacks. Chapter 14. By the time they were down from the mountain, Sebastian slung over Lulu's shoulder, two backpacks hanging heavily on her back. Lulu was an exhausted wreck, and Sebastian's ankle was feeling much better. Surprised? Lulu now finished with him for the day and having Sunday off, first took a long, cool swim in the lake, then spent the rest of the weekend wondering why all of her shenanigans had failed. Okay, so she'd gone too far when she tricked her skinny little kid into carrying two giant backpacks up the mountain. And okay, he'd rather hear secrets than eat candy. And when she told him that everyone liked her better than they liked him, who, who knew? Who knew he would say that he liked her better too? The things Lou did to Sebastian didn't seem to make him unhappy. She needed to think of a lot, think a lot harder about what else she had heard on campfire night that would. But dumping a mushy PB and J in her little brother's bed and pretending she put it there just in case he got hungry, that was Counselor Caroline's story. Sounded too messy for Lulu to do to Sebastian. Even though Caroline said that it was fun to watch her brother wa uh, her brother washing it out of his ears and nose and hair and popping out of the closet and screaming, boo, to her little sister, that's Counselor Rosa's story, sounded too lame for Lulu to do to Sebastian, even though Rosa said that it was fun to hear her sister's eek, eek, eek. So maybe Lulu was thinking she ought to forget about the story she heard on campfire night and chant Sebastian a bad and beastly chant and said, we know how Lulu loves her chants. And so on Monday morning, when Lulu went to Sebastian, she didn't say hello or even wave to him. Instead, she looked him up and down, frowned an unfriendly frown, and started chanting.
I did not and I do not, and I'll never want a sibling whose shirt is smeared with breakfast and whose nose is always dribbling and whose teeth are stuck with pieces of food that he keeps nibbling and who always and forever be a nibbling, dribbling sibling. Mm. Wow, you're such a good poet. That's such a good poem, Sebastian said to Lulu completely ignoring the fact that he had been dissed by her. For the hundredth time I'm thinking, what's wrong with this kid? For there goes Sebastian yet again, unbothered by Lulu's rude ways and telling her how wonderful she is. And there will go Lulu, not listening to what he was saying, except this time for reasons I don't understand and can't explain. Lulu is giving Sebastian her total attention. I am a good poet. It is a good poem, Lulu unshyly agreed, enjoying each one of Sebastian's admiring words and compliments. And though she had planned on chanting another bad and beastly verse, rhyming with sibling, dribbling, and nibbling with quibbling, she instead sort of smiling at Sebastian and told him, keep talking. And you're beautiful, said Sebastian, and you tell the funniest jokes. And, said Lulu, deciding she didn't need another verse, keep talking. And, Sebastian went on, you know all the names of all the state capitals and everything. <laughs> That's true, said Lulu, not a bit bored with what Sebastian was saying. You can keep talking and giving me compliments if you want. To which Sebastian admiring, adoringly replied, and I'm thinking you're probably perfect through and through, he said. Oh, cut it out, Sebastian. What are you talking about? Lulu's okay, but probably perfect, please. Yet Sebastian thinks she is, and Lulu really, really likes that he thinks she is. So perhaps it isn't surprising that Lulu is suddenly thinking a thought that she has somehow never thought before. She's thinking that having a younger sister might not be so bad, so hideous, so horrible, such a nightmare if that sister totally adored her. And thought that she was a genius and a princess and a poet and did whatever Lulu told her to and gave Lulu all her candy and also her flashlight and thought she was probably perfect through and through. Lulu was actually thinking that she might not mind at all having a little sister who believed that her big sister was maybe the greatest person that she had ever met. In the time she had le left at Camp Sisterhood, she was going to have to learn to teach a little sister to adore her. She's thinking a plan. How can I teach a little sister to adore me like Sebastian does? And we're going to stop right there. All right, guys. See you next time for chapter 15.